Hey there. Hey, it's Tara Sage here of tarasagecoaching.com devoted to helping you live boundlessly and create a life and business that you don't need a vacation from. And I'm here today, obviously, with Carl. Hey, everybody. Good to be here. Today's a special day for us. Um, we uh, would like to call it our Nomadiversary. Our Nomadiversary! <laughs> We've got some champagne we're going to open. At for, the later. End. for later. For yeah. later. So, for those of you who are wondering, one year ago, pretty much this week, we left the DC area and began our nomadic living lifestyle experiment. Um, no destination, no timeline, no itinerary. Yep. And here we are, a year later. Yes, the experiment is still underway. Ongoing. And, you know, we never anticipated, we've been talking about this and kind of reflecting on it, and we really never anticipated all the personal evolution that would happen and all the learnings and the people that we would meet and the places that we would go and the adventures we would experience and all that has been created. And, you know, one of the lessons that really stands out as this kind of overarching theme is that you can't know where a road leads until you take it right so true. and that that's a metaphor for life and not just in living on the road so to speak right that you can't know where it leads until you take that road and today we want to share with you three pieces of our experience and of our learnings and revelations over this year of nomadic living and we're also going to share two special gifts with you. So hold tight for that. We'll share that at the end. So we're going to cover three. The number one one is the emotional impact mm -hmm. of changing your environment. We're going to talk to you about that. We're also going to talk about what we never expected would happen with our work. And number three, we're going to talk to you about relationship dynamics and keeping in touch with friends and family as we travel. So there you go. Yeah. All right. So you know that feeling you get when you're on vacation? Um, you wake up in the morning. It's a fresh day. You open the door. You take that big breath of fresh air you've never been able to take, you know, well, you're doing your regular work schedule, you look left, you look right, you look forward, and you know that no, no matter what you do next, it's going to be a new experience. Um, I had that happen not long after we began our journey. Um, about two weeks in, Tara and I had just about kind of be beginning to settle into our routine of how things work and how to, how to do this. Mm -hmm. um, I was getting out of bed, just made some coffee, Tara was still kind of in the process of rolling out of bed and I'm sitting down opening my laptop and um, we're, we're in North Car Carolina right off of a lake and um, I hear something on the roof and basically a bird a bird landed on the roof of the RV and um, that wasn't you know a bird landed on the roof of the RV but then it started singing and I had mm. never heard a bird song or a bird call like this before, mm. and I just paused because I didn't want to. I didn't want to scare it away, you know. Tara's like still half awake, and I'm, I'm shouting her, sh shouting towards her in a whisper. I'm like, Tara, <laughs> Tara, wake up! <laughs> you, you won't believe this, you know. And it was really, it was really cool. It was one of those you just had to be there. Sweet. Um, and you know, during this, I'm looking out the window. It's it's fall. There's leaves on the ground, and there's squirrels running around. Some of them are running under one side of the RV and coming out the other. And I just, I just had to pause in that moment and I just realized that this new experience I was having at that moment, um, that opportunity w would not have been there if we hadn't decided to embark on this, this adventure, this nomadic living experiment. Yeah. And, um, you know, and then more recently we were in um, Cape Cod yeah. going to the beach, beautiful beach, um, even this time of year. And, um, like, as soon as we got there, just off in the distance, we saw about three or four whales come up for air repeatedly. Yeah. And it was just, it was awesome. It was the cool. ex the ex that, that experience was awesome. But the distinction 
between the two is that when we saw the whales, it wasn't a surprise. And um, the reason we think is because um, these types of um, experiences we've been having since we've been on the road, um, it's our new normal. Mm, yeah, 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 yeah. The unexpected has become normal exactly. in that sense, in a good way. Right. Right. Yeah, and then on the people side of things, you know, um, getting out of the nature aspect of it, you know, when we were in the Keys, we had an opportunity to participate in a pre-Mardi Gras parade, <laughs> which which is a story within itself. Yeah, that was pretty hilarious. Yeah, and then more recently, we we um, hopped in on a square dance class <laughs> and dance in uh, Bar Harbor, Maine. Mm -hmm. And um, for me, that took me back to third grade gym class, you know, and, and for Tara... I don't um, know. I'm not much of a do -si doer but Right. I caught on. She picked it up. She picked it up. <laughs> so, um, but what about you? What type of yeah. other experiences? So for me, there's two that really stand out from this year. One is when we were in the Florida Keys and I was working. It was a work day. And I went to take a call outside and walked down by, um, there was a dock and a, a picnic table right by the edge of the dock. And the water was all surrounding like right two feet away from me. And it was crystal clear. It was just exquisite. It was beautiful. And I'm on the phone for a work call. And as I'm talking on the phone, uh, what I now know to be an iguana came and joined me for this work call, right? And, and it was huge. It was big. It was, had a very long tail. I, I can't even fit it in the screen, but right. um, this big prehistoric looking creature joined me for a call. And, and I thought to myself, wow, like I really have made the world my office in that kind of location independent digital nomad work dream that I had held for a long time. That that was a moment of it's happened. I'm doing it. And um, Carl talked about that vacation feel and that kind of deep breath moment. Um, I, I really felt that frequently at, in Acadia National Park in Maine. Um, the views there were just absolutely breathtaking and I, yeah, it just, it was expansive, um, energetically for me. It was just one of those places that I will always carry in my heart. And I thought, why did it take me so long to get to Maine? I mean, I grew up in New England, but I didn't go to Maine um, because you kind of have to go there on purpose. So right. <laughs> those are two places that were two instances, really. It was more about my experience in the place than the place itself. And all of that created a new normal. So no longer are we in the static pattern of being in a familiar place, right? And, you know, while there are things about staying in the same place that offer a degree of comfort, which is understandable and also valuable, um, it, it risks going into kind of an autopilot. You know, when you maybe you relate, I know I've done it, where you drive to um, an office or a grocery store or the gym and you've gone there so many times before that when you drive, it's like you get there and you don't even remember the drive. Does anyone relate to that? Yeah. And so um, that's your mind going into autopilot because you've done it so many times before. Well, the risk of your environment staying the same is that you, um, your life can go into autopilot. And that's a risk of staying in the same place and staying in the same environment. But when things are new, you get to see them with fresh eyes and what I've found to be kind of like a childlike wonder again. Um, it's really breathed new life into mm -hmm. that piece of me. And so I'm really grateful for that. And it's not just nature. It's been times that we've gone into cities and explored various cities mm -hmm. all over. Um, food that we've eaten and uh, museums that we've gone to and cultural experiences and festivals and the list goes on. So it's all about this kind of diversity of experiences and diversity of environments that's really been profound, frankly. Yeah. Yeah. And <clears throat> touching back on the vacation feeling, um, since we've begun our journey, um, I haven't had the, or felt the urgency to t take any vacation time, to actually take any time off of work. Mm. Um, about every week, every two weeks, we're literally 
moving or, t or changing our environment. And mm -hmm. it's, it's really offered um, a freshness um, that I really feel like we've been on vacation. Do <laughs> you feel like we've been on vacation? Like this entire yeah. time. It's, it's yeah. really cool. Yeah. And we work full time. So, Both of us work full time. Yeah. I, I still do the nine to five. Yeah. You know, but it's just, it's really neat. Cool. It's really neat. Well, that takes us to number two, which is what we never expected would happen with our work. So, <laughs> first we'll say what we expected would happen, right. which is that we'd be doing the same work and we'd be doing it in a similar way. Um, you know, Carl is a software developer and programmer and I'm a life and business coach. And we thought we'll take this on the road. We can work remotely, both of us, and we'll just do the same thing the same way. Um, and never did we anticipate the evolution of what has happened. You can say that again. Uh, yeah. <laughs> like, for one, with my business, um, I never anticipated that three months after we left, I would be completely rebranding my company. And um, had you told me that would happen in November, what, you know, I never would have, I would have laughed at you, but I, I saw the, the need to incorporate the boundless living piece of me and the boundless living piece of what I was doing with my clients and my lifestyle into my business. So there you go. That was in January. And then also a few months later, we got so many questions about nomadic living that Carl and I decided to co-create a course together. And now we have a course, Nomadic Living 101, and we help other people who are curious to learn more about this lifestyle and learn how to do it themselves. Right. Um, along those lines as well, I wrote a book that's called 10 Things RV Dealerships Don't Tell You About Nomadic Living because I saw a gap in the education that I needed when I went to a dealership to start to learn about this. And so I wrote a book about it. Never did I anticipate I'd be writing a book about what RV dealerships do or don't do. Um, and then also uh, we have a few exciting speaking engagements coming up. Um, we are going to be at RV events. Um, we'll be telling you more about that and hopefully you can come out and see us speak. So that's coming up. Yeah. That's, that's the short list. But there you go. Those are a few of the things that I never anticipated about work. Yeah, and, and for me as a software developer, programmer, um, I can definitely say that this lifestyle ha has contributed to uh, <laughs> my creativity. Um, I have refined and made, read, refined and re continuously refined mm. um, a lot of the software that I work with, the, pr the programming that I've done. Um, but it's also given me an opportunity to expand um, from a creation standpoint um, as far as apps um, and other types of programs I'm working on um, that I'm excited about for the future, um, which is real a really big deal for me. Um, and I can't really say that um, our previous um, lifestyle really allowed me personally the opportunity to have that kind of... Um, growth to think outside of the box um, and um, from a programming perspective um, there really is more than one way to get to the same solution but when you can really see and, and touch all of those possibilities it's really it's really cool and I know that um, this lifestyle contributed to that a lot absolutely yeah, yeah that's been stunning um, the piece about having more mental space mm -hmm. and um, I think the minimalism piece of it has really contributed to that we live in a small space we pared down we downsized big time yeah. and um, all of that has allowed for room for creativity on a new level and inspiration you know our experience and our environment has inspired our creations ultimately yeah. So and true. that's been a big takeaway. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. So the relationship one, let's go on to that relationship dynamics and keeping in touch with friends. Fam yeah. Fam family and friends. Family and friends. Friends and family. Friends and family. There we go. Um, so 
One of the things I've heard, or I don't know where I read this, somewhere along the line, but the idea that love grows in small spaces. And I think there's a lot of truth to that. Mm -hmm. And that has certainly been my experience in this experiment here with Carl. Mine too. Um, and I think a big piece of it is due to the fact that when you're living in a small space together with another person, you, you can't hide, number one, from yourself, and you can't hide from the Each other, other person right. either. Yeah. So that's been super interesting and really a gift. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and uh, another aspect of that is um, um, the small space, in a way, has accel accelerated the the moving through of things. Um, whether it's a challenging situation between the two of you, or even a not a, a positive, not so challenging situation, mm. um, but um, a lot of that speaks to um, the commitment we have to each other but also the commitment we have to the experiment, the adventure we both agreed and decided to embark on. Yeah. Um, and uh, it's, it's, it's amazing. That's all I can really say. I can't really describe. I think you've done a great we, job. Like I can say that I've, I, I know I've grown a lot more. Um, I know we've grown a lot together. Mm -hmm. um, so much of that has happened just because of this. Yeah. You know, yeah. and and her. <laughs> and him. Yeah. Um, teamwork yeah, it's... has been key. And um, wherever you go, there you are, right? So we're moving, but y you still find yourself in each place. So it mirrors back to you a different part of yourself. And um, there is there's something super interesting about this lifestyle when it comes to relationships with yourself and with others. Right. And I stand by that and defend it wholeheartedly. At first people expressed like, well, aren't you kind of, you know, disconnecting somehow or, or running from or something like that. And, you know, I had to check with myself about that, but really it's been a running towards and an exploration of the depths of what can happen with relationships. Yeah. Um, one, yeah. of, one of the questions we get asked a lot is, don't you get sick and tired of each other sharing such a small space? Like, yeah, you know, yeah. And you know, something I say to that is if you and your partner, you know, things aren't going well with you, then a bigger space is not going to fix it. Right. So, and potentially a smaller space might help you not run from it and accelerate your growth together. Who knows? So, uh, on the friends and family side of things, uh, another question that we've gotten a lot is, don't you miss friends and family? And the answer is? The answer is yes. Yes, yes we do. But that's um, something that would be true no matter where we live because we have friends and family that live all over the country and even around the world. Right. So, you know. If home is where the heart is and your friends and family live all over, then where's home? Well, we've been able to go to the people that we most want to see and spend time with, which has been such a gift. Like, what? Nothing. Why is that funny? Don't worry about it. I'll tell you later. So it, we've had extended visits um, with friends and family, and it's been a real treat to be able to essentially just live like right down the road from them for a couple of weeks. Um, we became like my sister's neighbor and we got to spend time with her family and you know my niece and nephew and it was just so awesome we right. went to like the nursery school family dinner mm -hmm. and we got to see them after work and read bedtime stories and um, you know meet for lunch and all the things right. that you would do if you were in the town and being a neighbor to somebody so that's been a real treat yeah. Yeah. What else? Um, and recently, we were in we were in Philadelphia uh, visiting with my little sister, and 
who did we run into just randomly? One of my cousins. Yeah. You know, I didn't. I didn't even know was in town. And like, I mean, you talk about the odds. What yeah. are the odds? Small world. Yeah. And um, but that's the type of thing we've we've opened ourselves up to. Yeah. Um, there's a flow. That's yeah. very cool when that happens. Too. Yeah. So, um, yes, we op we always miss family and friends. But now, not only do we have an opportunity to go to where they are, mm -hmm. um, when we are in their neck of the woods, we can spend more time with them. Doesn't take any time from our work schedule. Right. Doesn't take any time from their work schedule. Right. Um, and. <clears throat> No vacation time needed. No, no vacation right? time needed. Yeah. You know, yeah, that's been that's been awesome. Yeah, we've we've got most of the East Coast covered. Yeah. At this point, Up there's and down. there's plenty more friends and family that, that we haven't gotten to yet. Yeah, we're coming. But um, it's yeah, mm. it's. So that's been awesome. That's been really really awesome and deepened our connections to friends and family. Mm -hmm. So. Um, we've also been able to meet people on the road that we wouldn't have otherwise been able to spend time with in person. Um, we've made connections with people through uh, social media, you know, online connections that have been kind of following our journey. And some of them we've had a chance to meet in person, like meet for dinner or go for a hike with them. And God, like the hugs and the love, that was so, so cool. Um, and I've really, really appreciated that opportunity too, to be in um, different places and people say, oh, this is where I live, let's meet. So that's right. been really great. That's been really great. Yeah, as we roll. As we roll. Oh, and I have to mention this. Um, I forget where we were exactly, but, but uh, at one location, we had an RV neighbor who kind of came around the corner yeah. and said, Tara? <laughs> Carl? Yeah, that I had was no funny. idea who this was. Yeah, we didn't know them. Apparently, this, this woman um, was a regular viewer of Tips from Tara. Yeah. And she had no idea that we were, were staying next to her. Yeah, little and did we know. Small world. Small world, yeah. yeah. So, that was kind of fun got to feel like a celebrity yeah. for three minutes. <laughs> <laughs> so the, there you go. So the overarching thing is that none of this would have happened or n and none of this would have been realized if we had stayed where we were in the DC area, if you missed where we began. But um, none of it would have happened if we had stayed where we were. Right. And so all that said, we want to invite you to continue to hitch to our learnings if this is speaking to you and something within you, a boundless, nomadic, maybe part of you is being activated and hitch to our learnings with two free gifts that we've got for you so that you can do your own experiments. So the first one is my book that I talked about. Um, 10 things RV dealerships don't tell you about nomadic living. So you can get the first three um, chapters or s sections of that book, if you will, um, for free. Uh, if you want to unlock all 10, it is a $4.95 investment for all 10. Okay. So if you crave travel, if you um, are curious about location independent lifestyles, and if you have wanderlust in your soul, then this book is loaded with tips and tricks and insights for how to really get your wheels turning around that. No pun intended, right? No pun intended. No pun intended. So yeah, so go and claim that book. That's number one, I'll tell you where to get that. Um, the second one is a program I created called Mission Possible. It's five day experiments in action program. Okay, mission possible, five day experiments in action program. I probably could have named it something shorter, but anyway, that's what it's called. And it is designed with busy people in mind. And when you sign up for that, it's just with your email address, you will receive uh, one playful, practical experiment per day for five days. And that will help you really start to break free of some of those unwanted, monotonous patterns in your life and uh, some of those autopilot habits that tend to have us going a little bit unconscious in our life. 
and reconnect to the deepest part of you, your dreams and your desires and dust some of those off and open up to new discoveries. And you don't have to go anywhere for that. So both of them can be claimed on my website, which is terrasagecoaching.com. So www.terrasagecoaching.com. And there you'll see there's a menu tab for free content. And if you go to free content, you will see both the 10 things RV dealerships don't tell you about nomadic living and the Mission Possible Five Day Experiments in Action program. So yay! So hitch to our learnings, enjoy those. They are gifts for you. And thank you so much for being on this journey with us. We look forward to another year plus ahead and we hope you'll keep watching. And let us know if you have any questions, please. Yeah, definitely. Here. Yeah, yeah, there you go. Happy Nomadiversary. Happy Nomadiversary. We've got a bottle of champagne. We're going to open it. We're going to open it off, off camera. It was yeah. high risk. High risk. <laughs> it might hit the camera and then everything. You never know what's going to happen. Go crashing down. We've got a little precarious <laughs> setup here. So thanks again for watching. Much love to you all. Thanks for joining us. Bye. Bye-bye.